Hello everyone, this is Anmuj Pachel. Uh, I am going to start a video series explaining different anatomy topics which we find tedious. So this is the first video lecture that I am shooting. Uh, let's quickly not waste time and go over the topic. Today I am going to be teaching you spinal nerve. So I have divided into a series of different things that you need to know and you know and which you will know after the lecture. So here it is, we need the prerequisite, you need to know the upper motor neuron pathway from the corticospinal tract, which is basically the brain conveying the spinal cord the information that it has to execute the moment on the effector organ. We have receptors, different type of receptors present all over the body that sense different kind of uh, sensations and take it back to the CNS to analyze and approach it. We have classification of nerve fibers and classification of the nervous system. So the topics in the green, you must know a bit about them before entering the video lecture. The topics written in black I'll be covering in very uh, detail. So we have the headings, we have spinal grey matter, which is basically the grey matter of the spinal cord and it is the place where most of the interactions between interneurons happen and the upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron happen. Then we're gonna go over the roots. The roots are the things that come out of the spinal cord which unite to form the trunks. Trunks and then we're gonna go over the remi, the ganglia and the some part of the plexus. So we are going to overview a bit of the histology of the spinal nerve, the brachial plexus, the cranial nerves and we are going to go over the applied part as spondylitis and disc prolapse. So this is what's going to be about the lecture today. I have annotations all over so you can skip to any topic which you want. So let's start, up, start it up. So first let's discuss about the upper motor neuron pathway. I am going to tell you what it is. It's basically the brain communicating with the spinal cord. So here we have the cortex of the cerebrum what happens is that neurons originate from here go down it's a very very rough idea don't take it too seriously neurons go down they go to the spinal cord okay in the spinal cord what happens is that most of the times another neuron is present in the gray matter which gives off a signal which is connected to another neuron and the another neuron goes to the effector organ. Always remember that when I am drawing the diagram, this represents the cell body, this represents the axon and this is the telodendry or the end plates. So what is happening is that the brain is communicating with the spinal cord via interneurons or not and finally giving the signal what the action has to be executed. So when an idea generated in the cortex goes via the spinal cord, via the spinal nerves, to the finally the muscles and the organs executing it. So that was the upper motor neuron pathway. To go in more detail, I can tell you that this is the cerebral cortex. The pathway passes from here. This is known as the corticospinal pathway. It goes through the posterior limb of the internal capsule. People who are already aware are going to understand much better, but if you are not aware, it's okay. They go, it's going to pass through the inter, uh, posterior limb of the internal capsule. It's going to go through the entire of the brain stem. This is the pons, the medulla and the midbrain. The crust cerebra of the midbrain, the base of the pons and the pyramids of the medulla constitute the spinal tract. And finally they are going to end up in the spinal cord as lateral corticospinal tract and the anterior corticospinal tract which will synapse with the motor neurons which will finally innovate different groups of muscles. So that was upper motor neuron pathway. Okay, the second topic that you need to know before going into the spinal nerves is that the thing called receptors. Receptors are basically uh, endings of the nerve fibers which carry the information from the periphery back to the CNS. These are very important as the brain is non-functional without receptors. There are several types of receptors which include photoreceptors which present in your eye, there is the gravitational receptors present in your ears, there is the pressure and touch receptors present all over your body and different types of receptors for pain touch, vibration, everything is present. So what happens is that basically if let us say that this is a receptor, this is a touch receptor. The common example of a touch receptor we give is the Pacinian corpuscle. Pacinian corpuscle is nothing but a nerve ending which has lost its myelin sheath and encapsulated by layers of connective tissue. So what happens is that any mechanical disturbance in the layers of the connective tissue causes mechanical stimulation of the nerve fiber inside which causes it to fire an action potential. So this is the connective sheath. This is your main receptor nerve ending. So the nerve ending is here. 
the dark part is actually the myelin sheath covering the receptor part is lost its myelin covering what happens is that this then goes to the spinal cord this is a cell body here and another axon and the spinal cord it synapses or not synapses depends on which kind of system we are going into but finally what happens is that this guy will synapse with this and it will reach the upper motor neuron that is it will reach the cerebral cortex where different relays and different stations so the point to be noted here is that any disturbance in this layers will cause this impulse to travel from here to the spinal cord and finally to the cortex so this is the classification this is the basic way of how the receptors work there is a different classification of receptors you may note it here so now we have the classification of the nervous system the nervous system is divided on the basis that whether it is present in the center line of the body or the periphery so the things which are present in the center line are called the central nervous system and which are not in the uh, not in the center are called the peripheral nervous system so we have on the basis of the axis the median axis we have the nervous system is divided into two that is one in the central axis and one in the peripheral axis so we have the cns and the pns peripheral nervous system and central nervous system respectively the pns it is further divided into two types that is the one system which takes the impulses from the brain to the downwards and another system which brings the information upwards so we have the upward track or we call it the ascending track and we have the descending track so descending track is basically things information going from the brain downwards ascending is information information coming up up towards the brain this is also known as efferents to the brain and this is also known as efferents to the brain efferents from the brain the efferent pathway can be classified differently it is classified further into types such as somatic somatic mean body soma means body so somatic means related to body which means that any information from the cns will end up affecting different vis non visceral things such as muscles and uh, different kind of structures we have the thing that innervates the viscera viscera is the organs any organ is known as a viscera the viscera are special because they are innervated by not by motor neurons but they are actually innervated by different nerve endings which release different kind of chemicals <clears throat> so this can be divided into autonomic nervous system this is actually the autonomic nervous system visceral is autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system is divided into parasympathetic and sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system is a separate branch of the ans and sympathetic is the separate branch of the ans these are divided on the basis of the actions of what happens if such a kind of nerve is stimulated for example if i stimulate a parasympathetic nerve it will cause the slow down of my heart rate if i stimulate my sympathetic plexus it will cause the increase in my heart rate so the final classification of the viscera is on the basis of whether or not they have different actions on the organs they are coming with so this is the autonomic nervous system this was all about the classification